Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Crossroads Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Not my machine. My New Holland's right there. This, uh, this is the biggest John Deere. What we're doing today is this is the fence line that I pushed. You've seen some video of me. Pushed it. Well, now the unfortunate part is left a bunch of stumps that I that I, I pushed over a bunch of these trees with the uh, skid steer, and then uh, I, I cut a lot of the chainsaw. And so what's left is stumps, unfortunately, but. Some of them are right in the line of uh, our fence, and we gotta get them cleaned up. And uh, this mulcher is, whoo, look at that smoke. It's getting after it. He's been on it for like two minutes, and it's, he's already got a, a halfway shredded. I've never seen this before, but I'm just amazed. I've heard about these machines, but there's nothing like them when you see it now. We've got a long day ahead of us. We've gotta go all the way down the line here. Uh, I got some drone footage for you coming and all kinds of stuff. Should be a fun day. We're gonna get this pasture ready. Some bison. Green grass is coming. This is the kind of stuff we're gonna be dealing with today. Here. Tried to burn that one. Look at that. This is all some of the stuff I pushed over with the skid steer. I know it's a mess. Biggest work is done. This is what's left with cedar. And I'm going through here and making sure all the barbed wire, because remember there was an old fence on here, I'm making sure all the barbed wire is out. And uh, obviously the T-posts, I've already pulled a bunch of T-posts up. All right, so what I'm doing is, uh, I've got my 332 here. I got some chain and I'm going through here and up. Marissa and I pulled out a bunch of T-posts in this line. There wasn't probably but a dozen left, but we pulled out a bunch of T-posts and then, uh, you know, you've got issues like this. This is an old fence. I think it was built in the 50s. So, uh, but you got issues like this. <laughs> you've got a T-post here that is grown into the cedar tree. This is an average cedar tree. In Oklahoma now this is a big cedar tree eastern red cedar I mean this thing is massive right here uh, this doesn't do it justice at all me standing next to it this is how nasty these trees are they'll take over your place real quick if you don't take care of them unfortunately I had to take I had to cut some pecan trees down and they were big and they were pretty and I know some of you are like no don't cut your pecan trees down Guys, we only had to cut two. They were exactly right in our fence line, where our fence line's gonna be. And unfortunately, we had to do it. But I'm gonna save some of it. And for Marissa and I, maybe we can get some of it milled. I know, it's pecan, so it's like, please don't. I'm, I'm not cutting a bunch of pecan trees down. I had to take two. They were like right in the center of our fence line. And, and trees can cause problems. Even if you leave them there on a fence line, uh, because if limbs limbs break and it comes down and falls on the fence, your new fence, uh, and that's another way for the bison to get out. So fences and trees do not get along. So we try to get rid of most most of the trees we can, um, and it was just hard to get rid of those. But they they are big pecan trees. 
and uh, there's a ton of pecan trees on this property. Now I'll get to show some of them to you later on in the future, but I'm making sure there's no barbed wire and he's just easing his way down this fence line, but we have a ways to go and uh, he's been at it maybe about an hour now, close to. That's where we're at and that's what I'm doing with my skid steer and uh, can't wait to see some of this stuff, like this big boy right here. The guy, I mean, look at it next to the skid steer. There you go, there's a good comparison. Uh, it's a it's a big tree. I can't wait to see this be grinded up. This one gets to stay, just so you guys know, this pecan tree stays. We are saving as much as we can. But right now he's grinding that big pecan tree that's laying down over here. Uh, he's grinding that stump and he's been on it for at least 15 minutes. But it is directly right in our line of fence. We'll go right down here, clear all this out. able to get some of this here close to this telephone pole he got as close as he could without getting the telephone pole now he's working on the hackberry those are tough tough trees and I'm really excited about this when he's gonna push this over away from the power line and grind that tree that I couldn't even get through with the chainsaw is so so jacked up but guys here's the thing what I love about the mulcher side of things is there's hardly any disruption um, on the ground. That's what I love about it is there is some dirt here where um, some of this is where cedar was and, and the grass wasn't growing. And so, uh, but there's hardly any disruption. You can't even tell where that tree was where I just pulled out that T post. Um, I think it was right here and you can't even tell where it was, where it existed. But there is some dirt, but this was left over from where the cedars were growing. Uh, that's where a lot of this, you can see the rings here of where the cedar trees were growing and uh, there's no grass that exists there. Um, and so that's what's left to here. You see some of this acidic stuff left over from the needles of the cedar trees and that's how damaging uh, they are. And there's no grass growing here. So part of that is what is going on here. But the other thing, here's the other great part about this is look at this that's mulch that's just pure uh smells really good mulch and that's what's left on the ground after uh after he mulches all this up uh he, he, you know it goes right back into mother nature and, and this is great uh top soil uh, or top cover for a lot of this to get started it goes right back into the ground
wanted to show you there's uh you see these little brown piles over here I'll show you what these guys are just in case you probably already know just by the looks of that but look at there one of the worst things ever fire ants that's what these mounds are that are here mound look at this this is a huge mound so bad part what comes with open fields like this with short grass um, and then you get a little bit of moisture this is what happens you get fire ants uh, they already exist here and now that winter is, is starting to disappear look at this dude <laughs> that, is, that is a massive pile of fire ants all it takes is one poke and, and they'll be disturbed and they'll move from one place to the other I've used a couple different products for for fire ants um, but they are all over this right here every little patch you see every little mound you see is fire ants no those aren't cow patties cows haven't been in here in almost a year these are all fire ant mounds unfortunately so that is the bad part about uh, when you do get moisture that's when the fire ants come back and they start rebuilding the mounds and spreading out now that the, the tall grass is down, you can really see them, unfortunately. But, good thing is, is it's really pretty out here and it's definitely turning green, which is a good thing that fire does. I have picked up tons of this. I rolled this up, by the way. It didn't come like this. <laughs> I rolled up a whole bunch of barbed wire. Especially, I had to clean it up for him so he didn't get it caught in this mulcher. This will be the first pasture that we rotate our animals in. I hadn't decided if I'm going to do the actual big herd, the big Joe herd, or the calves yet or not, but um, they're going to love this green grass. It's nice that we're getting out of winter and getting in those warmer days because uh, after this fire hit, it, we got a little bit of rain right after the fire and then we got rain again here recently and that green grass has taken off, which is awesome and I love it. As you can see here from above, um, the green grass um, doesn't take long. Once you get a little bit of a heat, uh, you get some warm temperatures, it rises and it looks totally different than uh, this tall grass. That green grass is under there, this stuff here, you just can't see it. Now the bison could find it, but um, it's a little easier for that grass to grow now that it has been burned. I love burning, I love controlled burns, and I think burning is a great way. Um, it's a great tool for the environment, and I think it's, it's a wonderful thing. And we'll do, we'll do some actual controlled burning out here uh, we just don't like the wildfires um, or the, the out of control fires that, that happen or the, the random fires that happen. Uh, we don't want those. We want to be prepared for them. And uh, it's good that it burnt. Um, I, I have some more <laughs> that need to be burnt, but we'll take it because it's pretty now and it looks clean, minus the fire ant mounds. So I just went and got Brooks and uh, Carl is down here. He's actually, we're done with the fence line. He got it like in a half a day. It, it took him. Brooks and I are going to go down here because since he's had some extra time, I asked him to clean up around a pond. So let's go uh, see what he's got. Looks totally different. Look at that thing's been chewed up. Add that to the burn pile. Look at all that mulch. This is what it looks like, in case you guys didn't know the blades on that. This is kind of the stump. These are the lines that it leaves. You can get even deeper in that. But that's what's left. That's awesome. What do you think? 
Oh, look at this boat arc. The Osage Orange. Look at all this yellow. Yellow. Yellow? Good. Yeah, look at all this yellow. The yellow. Not much that? left. That's it. So this is where our fence will start, is right here. And we'll go all the way through. Yeah, somewhere down there. Oh, okay. Pretty. Hey, look at the pond. It's pretty. You can actually see the pond. Maybe a Bradford pear right there. I don't know. Look at all the blackberries been mulched. Berries, berries, blackberries. Wow. Berries, berries. Looks much better. Joe, you got something on your head. Not in front of the eye. It'd be a blackberry bush. Not good, brother. Not good. You got it all up in there. This is uh, such an exciting day for us um, because Carl with his uh, John Deere, that is the 95 horsepower John Deere, I believe. Uh, it's one of the bigger John Deeres. Um, and, and he's got that massive mulcher on the front of it and it's a, that's a high flow um, mulcher on the front. I don't know the technical name for it, just crush or something like that. And uh, got the baby girl with me, she's hanging out with dad. But, uh, you guys are probably wondering, well, Dusty, you got a skid steer. Um, why don't you have a mulcher? Well, guys, those are very expensive machines. Uh, yes, I'd love to have one. I could use it for a long time out here on this place cleaning stuff up. I could spend a lot of time inside that skid steer, which I already have, cleaning up that fence. It has taken a long time just to get to this point. Now we are ready to build some fence, which is very, very exciting. Right now, um, Carl's been able to uh, do a bunch of stuff with that and he's got more knocked out today than I, I thought he would we didn't know how long it's gonna take we thought it was gonna take a day just to get all the stumps cleaned up hey can you wave okay anyways uh, I thought it'd take all day to clean those stumps up and he got them done in a half a day which is awesome but right here where my truck is parked and you can see some of this stuff right here this is where uh, a blackberry bush was well, that was taller than my truck. 
um, and he took care of all the blackberry bushes, the big high ones. There's some mixed in in and out with the with the grasses and whatnot, but he took care of the big, huge uh, clumps of them, which is awesome because uh, it'll come back. It will come back. Just the little stems will grow back, and then I will get to spot spray them. And the bison will actually clean this up, and, and grass will actually be able to grow under here, which is awesome because that's what we want. They take up so much room of, of grass growth, um, and so do cedars. But uh, Carl did a whole bunch of work today, and uh, <coughs> I just went along, made sure there was no barbed wire, T-post, all that was cleaned up, and he's been getting after it, still getting after it, been all day at it. So he's just here for one day, and I just rented, um, paying for one day so um, he's got more covered than I expected so very exciting and ready for a fence and uh, fence is cleared and this pasture uh, here in about a month will be ready so thank you guys for watching hope you enjoy it we'll see you next time